Hi, I'm Leonard Malton, here to introduce one of my all-time favorite films, which is possibly one of yours, too. And a great movie, as you must know, doesn't just happen. There's no scientific formula. The stars simply have to align. And that happened in 1946, when David Lean directed Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. And it happened again when he and his partner Ronald Neen teamed up yet again to make another Dickens classic, Oliver Twist. And it happened one more time in 1951 when an entirely different group of people gathered to make A Christmas Carol, known in the UK as Scrooge. And this is the film we still love and cherish and which many people believe is the definitive version of Charles Dickens' great story. Now we wouldn't be here talking about it at all were it not for its leading man, Alastair Sim. A brilliant, wonderful comedic actor whose dramatic skills I think were often undervalued. But I think the reason that he's so great as Scrooge is that we believe him at every step of this story. When he's being mean, nasty, when he's being scared to death, and when he sees the light and becomes giddy with joy at this new world that has opened up to him. I don't think I've seen any other actor portray that aspect of Scrooge so beautifully or so convincingly. He's surrounded by a wonderful cast made up of some of the greatest actors in the history of British theater and film, starting with Mervyn Johns as Bob Cratchit. Mervyn Johns so well remembered from the British thriller, The Classic Dead of Night, also the father of the great Glynis Johns, whom you all know, of course, as Mrs. Banks from Mary Poppins. And interestingly, Bob Cratchit's wife is played by Hermione Badley, who is in Mary Poppins playing Ellen, the housekeeper. Another generation got to know her on television in the 70s as the housekeeper Mrs. Naugatuck on the TV series Maud. Then we have George Cole as the young Ebenezer. And interestingly, in real life, Alastair Sim helped raise George Cole and mentored him, got him started in the acting profession. Michael Hordern plays Jacob Marley and, of course, Marley's ghost, one of the great British actors of the 20th century, later knighted Sir Michael Hordern. You've seen him in countless plays, movies, television shows, and many people remember him as Gandalf in the classic BBC radio adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. Ernest Thesiger plays an undertaker, a rather small role here, but if you love movies, you must know Bride of Frankenstein, and if you know Bride of Frankenstein, you can't forget him as Dr. Pretorius. It's always wonderful to see him in any film. A young character actor named Peter Bull was just getting started in his career. He's maybe best remembered as the Russian ambassador in Dr. Strangelove. Here, he has a rather small role as a businessman, but he's pretty unmistakable. He also narrates the film. And then there's Patrick McNee, then an unknown just at the beginning of his career, later to gain immortality as John Steed on The Avengers, here playing a young, cheerful Jacob Marley. There's an interesting assortment of people behind the camera as well. Irish-born director Brian Desmond Hurst enjoyed success, worked steadily from the 1930s to the mid-1960s, and yet, I don't think there's anything else on his resume that you would call a classic, except this movie. That's not true for screenwriter Noel Langley, because he was one of the principal writers of The Wizard of Oz, and that's hard to top. He went on to make many other films in the 1950s, including Dickens' The Pickwick Papers and a remake of A Tale of Two Cities with Dirk Bogard, not to mention Walter Scott's Ivanhoe and Knights of the Round Table. Two members of the production team later went on to become directors, Cinematographer C.M. Pennington Richards worked mostly in television, directing such shows as The Buccaneers, Ivanhoe, and Danger Man, the one we know as Secret Agent with Patrick McGowan. Editor Clive Donner became a director in the 1960s, made such films as Nothing But the Best and What's New Pussycat, but most significantly in the 1980s he directed two TV movie adaptations of Charles Dickens classics, both starring George C. Scott and all-star casts. In 1982, he made Oliver Twist with Scott as Fagin. And in 1984, he made, yes, A Christmas Carol with George C. Scott as Scrooge. And this, I think, is the only version I've ever seen that's comparable in quality to the one we're watching now with Alastair Sim. I can't help but think that Clive Donner learned some lessons from this 1951 classic on which he worked so closely. And those lessons were understatement and restraint. It's true of this film, and it's true of his version from the 80s. 
But of course, George C. Scott was no Alastair Sim.